I'm Tim Flannery, and welcome to Tim's Tips. Today we're going to talk about picking up signs, keeping your head in the game, and things that might make it easier for you to get the signs. Jeremiah, come here. Come on over here. You know, you weren't even looking for a bunt sign in that situation. You got nobody out. You got a guy on first base. We're down by a run. You got to look for a sign. But, Tim, sometimes the signs can be confusing. The reason those signs can be confusing because sometimes you're looking at the wrong sign in the wrong situation. Now, we're down by one run, nobody out, and a man on first. You know we're going to bunt. That's the only sign you should look for. You shouldn't look for a steal. So by eliminating the signs that you know that aren't going to be called, it makes the signs a lot easier to pick up. For instance, let's say, you know, as a hitter, you come up and it counts 3-0. and oh. And the, hitters, the pitcher's been throwing some wild pitches. He's been walking people. All of a sudden, it counts 3-0. and oh. if Your coach is giving you signs. What sign will you look for? Take. The take sign. With a guy on first base with one out, and you're ahead in the count, usually the hit and run will be put on. Yeah. And the bunt, the sacrifice bunt, will usually be put on with nobody out and a guy on first. By eliminating the signs that aren't going to be called and just zeroing in on the sign area, like... If you got a bunt on, don't look for the hit and run or steal. Just look for the bunt. All of a sudden, there the bunt is. It's a lot easier to pick up, and it will really eliminate a lot of the hard times that you can have trying to learn signs. Signs. <laughs> They're not easy, even at the big league level. See you next time on Tim's Tips. No, they're not easy sometimes, Timmy. You know, a man that also makes things very easy for us is when we look back at the history of the Padres. Bob Chandler standing by with this date in Padres history. 20 years ago today, June 23rd, 1971, the Padres were not a very good team, and they played the Houston Astros in a doubleheader at San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. And you know what? They won both games. That didn't happen very often then. And what was even more unusual, the same pitcher won both games, Bob Miller. Bob Miller was such a terrific relief pitcher for the Padres at that time that the, his teammates nicknamed him Vita Monk because his nickname was Monk Miller, and Vita Blue was a great pitcher for the Oakland A's, so Bob Miller became Vita Monk. Winning two games in one day was really something new for Bob Miller, because although he began his career in St. Louis, he was pitching for the New York Mets in 1962, that awful Mets team. His record was 0-12. Reporters were always around his cubicle after every loss, and on the last day of the season of 1962, he won his only game of the year to finish 1-12, and, and you know what? No reporter showed up because he no longer was unusual. He had won a ball game. Anyway, he won two of them 20 years ago today over Houston, and that's what happened on this date in Padre history. I played winter ball in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico for the Mayaguez Indios for five years. And there was a little kid that always used to hang around the ballpark in Mayaguez and try to get balls to get into the game. And uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. And the Cardinal pitcher, Omar Alavarez, was that kid. He's now in the major leagues. I remember him hanging around the ballpark all the time, just loved the game of baseball. And he's turned into a pretty good pitcher. He's taken Joe McGrain's spot in the Cardinal rotation. He's not afraid, like McGrain, to pitch inside. He's got a good fastball and a good slider, but right-handers give him trouble. I'm going to say Tuffle might have a good game against Omar Oliveres, but the left-handers are going to have to bear down against them. And the pitchers, and I'm talking about the Padre pitchers, when this guy is at the plate, don't take him lightly because he is a good, good hitting pitcher. Now, what you're going to look for against Omar Oliveres is for him to get ahead of you with fastballs, probably on the outside part of the plate. And if he's ahead of you in the count, he'll try to jam you on the inside part of the plate. Uh, both with fastballs and sliders. So look at the youngster Omar Olivares, who, by the way, even though he picked up the loss against the Padres, he was Bruce Hurst on the mound in San Diego. Olivares gave up only two runs on three base hits over seven innings of work.